Houston, our instruments are showing that we have a incoming message from deep space. Repeat, Houston, we have an incoming message from deep space. Houston, we'll begin playing message now. Houston, we're going to try and translate that up here. Hold for translation. Translation complete. We'll begin playing message now. Hey, it's me, Melissa. What do you do when the aliens invade? Take a shot of MK Ultra and watch Melissa Jade. Put on your tinfoil hat and tune right in. We got that crime spree, flat earth theories, government conspiracies, a complex Mandela effects, unidentified objects, a mind expanding, fake moon landing, what are all things understanding? It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Aliens is on the sun, or in Area 51, time travels, unravels, haunted castles, cops are baffled, potential experimental thoughts that make you transcendental. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Crime streets, flatter theories, government conspiracies, complex Mandela effects, unidentified objects of mind expanding, fake moon landing, what it all but understanding. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Hello, everybody. How are you guys? Happy Tuesday. I am exhausted, but I am eager to spend another night with you guys and to continue on with these calls because we are going to be listening to two calls today. And these two calls are the one year anniversary of Letitia's arrest. So she was arrested March 2nd, 2020, and we have officially gotten to March 2nd of 2021. Now, we listened to the one-year anniversary of Gannon's murder, and you would never, ever know that this was a significant date, that it was affecting it. Yeah, Michelle, because I want um, Deets on the Sheets having a live, so I want to be there for her. But they're two longer calls. They're two. It's probably going to take us like at least an hour to go through both of these calls. Um, and I would do a third, except the third is really long, too. So I don't want to break them up. But these are the only two calls. I'm sorry to hear that. No, nope, not today. I hope it gets better. Hey, Lace Lamos. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't do the individual's hellos, but um, I'm excited. You would never know. Hey, LT, LFT. You would never know that it was the one-year anniversary of Gannon's murder or it was affecting her in any way whatsoever. But let's see, because she is selfish, right? She's selfish, so will she mention how it's the one year anniversary of her getting arrested? I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Shane. So the two calls we have up on are about. Yeah, they're two pretty long calls, actually. We have the Amy's. We have the first call up on the docket, which is with Amy Lang. And then the second call up on the docket with Amy Bolton. They are back to back. They are both from March 2nd. Now, Amy Lang, again, is the person who reached out. She really has no connection at this point to Letitia, just somebody who was following the case, was part of the Facebook groups, reached out, started corresponding with her, which developed into calls, video chats. Amy Lang even recorded them. And she ended up becoming Letitia's power of attorney. Amy Lang ended up releasing a lot of that on Critical Case Patreon. It didn't end well. Then we have Amy Bolton. So I'm excited to see how this is going to go. So we're going to just jump right on into it. 
Let me pull this up. All right. All right. All right. All right. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. She wasn't. This was in the past, Shacto. So it wasn't a recent thing that was in the past. And do you guys remember those emails I went through between Letitia and Al the days leading up to Gannon's murder? And they were very ominous and premeditative in nature. That was the emails that Amy Lang leaked because Amy got access to Letitia's Gmail accounts, give, being that she was her power of attorney. Oh, thank you, Dogmon. Hi, Kaleida Hope. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with me. You guys are absolutely amazing. Here we go. March 2nd, 2021, one year anniversary of Letitia's arrest. Amy Lang is first up. Let's listen to it. What's up? Hey, hey, lady. I was wondering if I was going to hear from you today. Oh, yeah, I know. I just. I just got out. Uh, today was a late day to get out, so I just been waiting all day. It's so, it's so like bizarre because I like literally. I'm not even joking. I literally really think about uh, Starbucks for me or get oh, something. I hate it. Always does. Oh, yeah. Hold on, it jumped. Hi, Angie. Nice. If I was gonna hear from you today. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, I just got out. Uh, Today was a late day to get out, so I just been waiting all day. It's so, it's so like bizarre because I like literally, I'm not even joking. I literally was just thinking about you like two minutes ago. Oh, I've been yeah? out running errands, but yeah. Now Amy Lang is a bit concerning, honestly. Yeah, Blue, and I'm not trying to be mean, but the I should I address it or should I not address it? Amy Lang, uh, I don't know if I should say it. I, I don't vibe with her. And there are video visits that are recorded between them. And I don't like, um, I'll keep it to myself. I don't, I don't vibe with her. I've been out running errands all day. And then I hopped on my phone and I got on Google and I typed your name in to see if there's like anything new, like like headline wise. There's new. nothing, nothing new, but I was like, I just wonder if there's anything else going on I don't know about. And then like 10 minutes later, I looked at my phone and I had your name saved to the number. And I yeah, looked yeah. down, I was like, oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> well, good. That means there's nothing new. So that means that <laughs> Welcome, LFT. Thank you so much for becoming a member. We're happy to have you part of the channel. Thank you. You guys are a bad influence. You guys really are. Um, How do I put it? In the video visits and stuff, she, oh, my thing's on a loop. Hold on. She, she tends to push away her own child and prioritizes Letitia. Um, that's a very general way I'll say it, and I won't get more into it, but if you have watched, you'll probably know what I'm referring to. And it makes me uncomfortable. No one's like stalking any of my pictures, trying to figure out anything, doing anything, you know, anything crazy right now. So that's good. Yeah, the only one that I saw was just like, it was like, uh, Letitia Stout intends to represent herself. What happens next? And I was thinking to myself, oh, well, she goes to trial and represents herself. <laughs> it's like a self explanatory question. <laughs> What happens next? Like, oh, what happens next? This <laughs> is why I don't comment right? stuff on the internet because I'm too much of a smart ass. <laughs> yeah. People treat me oh. they like. Did you get any good sleep yet? Uh, I went to bed last night at like, I think like one thirty or 2 o'clock and I was up at breakfast, which is like 6. So. I, I don't know why. Like, this week, well, over the weekend, I had a really hard time sleeping and what was yesterday, Monday? No, yeah, yes, Monday. Sunday night, I could not sleep, like, to save my life. I was tossing and turning all night. I woke up in, like, a pool of sweat. And that never really happened. Okay. And then my husband, my husband was like, what's the matter with you? And I was like, I don't know. I just, like, <laughs> it's hard to explain. Like, I think I told you, 
Like, sometimes I'll be perfectly normal and just leveled out, and then my mood will just plummet, like, all the way down for absolutely no reason. And it's hard to come back from those, those days. I hate it. I know, I know. Trust me, I have, like, lots of crazy days in here. And sometimes it's just crazy moments or crazy hours, but it's just... That's, again, no. That's not true. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> Letitia's version of crazy is when she's putting on a performance. Yeah, absolutely. And hello, everybody who just came in. Um, but I just, it, it's so peculiar to me how she even refers to breaks in your mental capacity at, just like, you know, like, oh, you know, yeah, I got a headache earlier. You know, like she talks about it so freely as if she is consciously aware that she has a dissonancing advantage of when she's in her normal state of mind versus when she is crazy. And I've never, you know, no, I am not um, licensed in this field or anything like that, but I've done a lot of just research on my own and I've never seen someone really tough, someone who actually struggles with these uh, ailments refer to their breaks in this way. It's just so, it's just bizarre. Stop it, Adnoid Amy. <laughs> Stop. Okay. I try not, I, I very much try not to ever, you know, talk about the way people look or anything like that. But yes, she, I think she would do well with an adenoid surgery. Okay. Just saying. Just, you know, you get I, so out of it, you know? I feel bad because, like, you know, I'm home 98% of the time with yeah. the kids. And the majority of the time, like, you know, I'm pretty happy go lucky and we do stuff. And then on my, like, bad days, I, like, sit in one spot and, like, just don't really want to talk, don't want to do anything. And that's, I feel like it's not fair to them. And then I go to bed feeling like crap, like, I need to try harder next time tomorrow. And, and then... <laughs> Eventually, I'll get out of it. <laughs> yeah, and like, oh, you know, it's funny. Like the days I feel like I should have, I could have been better. My kids will be like, "I have the best day today with you, mom," and I'm like, "How?" <laughs> yeah, like we didn't do anything. Well, it's just being with you too. You know, just being around, knowing you're there. See, that's a good thing. You're able to be there with them. Where you know, most parents these days are so busy that they just laptops and all that stuff raises their kids. You know, and so you're there. So. Yeah, check this out. I was going to tell you this. Um, the school that my daughter goes to, my oldest daughter, they sent out a notice. They're going to go ahead and have the kids go back to school full time starting March 15th, um, which is kind of ridiculous because school gets out in May. Yeah. But there was an option that we could leave our child, like, remote learning, like, at home. So I... Why would you ever want... Oh, thank you, Lulu. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, why would you ever want to talk to Leticia? Like, I, I could understand if you want to start, like, communications with her just because you have an interest um, in true crime and you may want to see her side of things. But why you would ever share anything regarding your children with someone who is, at this point, charged with the murder of, of a child... I do not understand. Yeah, parenting advice from Leticia. Okay, I'll pass. Um, and Amy tried later on, on the interview she did, she tried to make it seem like, you know, oh, she was just kind of given so she could get and playing Leticia. No. And you know what? If that's true, shame on you. I, and I do not want to defend Leticia. But if you got her power of attorney, like nobody should take the role of somebody's power of attorney unless they have someone's best interest of mind, including Letitia. Sorry, I do not like her, but shame on you, Amy Lang, if you took that role as her POA and had full intentions of screwing her over. That's not okay at all. It shows really more about your character, honestly, but she tried to play it off like she was never believing her, but she fangirled hard, hard. Yeah, they played each other. 
I just selected for my oldest daughter just to finish out first grade remote learning. And I talked to her teacher about it and she was more than okay with it. Cause she's like, I know that she's doing extremely well. Like, you know, she's ahead of the class. They had to do something this morning, um, like a 30 minute reading program type thing. Yeah. Um, they were supposed to do it yesterday and none of the kids did it except for my daughter. So her teacher's like, all right, Phoenix, you know what? Just go have 30 minutes to do whatever. So we found out yeah. in the living room, like, I played with her hair. So I'm going to keep her home for the last, you know, little bit of first grade and then well, please, try to see. that change, it can make her regress just because she's going to have to go in there and they're not, okay, they're not just going to go to school and start learning because they're going to have to do like their rules and all that stuff because first grade ain't just going to go in the classroom and start learning. You got to reset the classroom, yeah. read, you know, so she's going to spend that much time getting acclimated with the new system and then she could be at home learning, you know. That, that's what I was going to like because I know that you are very well educated when it comes to child education. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, what? What was that, Amy? Like, <laughs> very educated when it comes to this. N- n- no, no. Hi, LA. Seriously, are we really pretending like Letitia is a prestigious fucking teacher over here? Give me a break. Yeah. Like, I gotta ask the teacher for her advice because, like, I, I seriously, yeah, like, I, I would love for her to go to school because she's a socialite. But I fear for how it's going to go when all of these kids come back on the same day with, you know, plexiglass yeah. dividers between their tables and wearing masks, and they're used to, you know, dealing with the teacher on over a computer. And they've already so, been out this long anyway. You know, this thing has been going on for so long. So two school, two school years off and on. You know, they've mm-hmm. been, you know, yeah, I would, I mean, if you got the means to do it because you're at home, then yeah, but obviously. Yeah. Be and able to, you know. Well, the thing, the thing too is, is I was going to write you a letter about this, but we've been video chatting so much. I was going to tell you that I keep forgetting. Um, I don't have a car anymore. I got rid of my car. So um, yeah, well, long story short, my husband um, started his own LLC. He's a truck driver. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a drink so you want to go out and buy a truck and do, I forget what it's called, it's just where you drive like a big S350 with a trailer on it and pull small loads and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So he wanted to do that, and he actually had a pretty good idea, which was we could trade my car in towards getting a truck, and the company will pay for, you know, the loan for the truck, but we're saving. Amy. Amy. Letitia doesn't give a shit. You think she cares that you don't have a car no more she's just waiting for her opportunity to tell you how crazy she's being paying the monthly payment what we were paying for my car right right. i hardly go anywhere anyway so i'm like all right screw it so uh yeah yeah, i got rid of my car i traded it in i've got twenty thousand dollars off my credit now i just got the thing from capital one saying you know it's paid full so my husband has his work truck and then That's he's it. got a SUV, a big explorer. So he kind of like gifted it to me temporarily. Hey, but you know, when he's got other people driving the work truck, he'll have to take the explorer, which leaves me without a car. So I'm like, well, that would be an issue if, you know, my oldest daughter started going back to school because how is she going to get there? They, yeah. they won't let her ride the bus because we live too close to the school. We live like three blocks from the school. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, I'm not letting you walk. So. Yeah, I'm going to keep her home, and then... Like things are doing good. Uh, hopefully, they'll continue to stay that way, huh? I hope so. I'm I'm sure you probably got a kick out of that last letter. I, I know. I was like, wow, this is a loyal one here. He better get his stuff together. <laughs> yeah, like, the first time I, like, wrote like, a little bit, you know, about the past, I was like, I probably shouldn't go into, like, all the details. I- you wrote Letitia about your husband's past? First of all, let me tell you something. You don't bring your private business to people like that, let alone a child murderer. But how disrespectful of you to go behind your man's back. Sorry, I don't like that shit. To go behind your man's back and blast him to Letitia Stout. 
Now, if, if he cheated on you, X, Y, and Z, guess what? Leave. Or else you stay, you're not the victim anymore. You know about it. And I'm very adamant on top of that stuff. The first time someone cheats, you're the victim. Second time, don't come crying to me. You chose to stay. You are no longer a victim if it happens again. But I don't like that shit. You be loyal to your man and you don't blast people's business, especially to a child murderer. That's weird. That's weird. If you have to open up to a fucking child murderer about your man, that's weird. I believe people can change. Um, I'm a pretty forgiving person. And then I read your letter back and then I just got on my computer and started typing and typing. And then it was like 12 or 13 pages. So I made the font smaller and I was like, I feel bad for how long this is, but I figured, I know, you know, like I, got anything else to do. <laughs> I felt so bad. Cause I was like, you know what? We've gotten to know each other pretty well. Yeah. So yeah. you might as yeah. well know, you know, where he and I came from, but yeah, we've, we've been through a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping I was, <laughs> I was gonna get to do a video today, but the time didn't work out right with that girl and um, trying to video, and I was like, because I kind of wanted to yeah. try today, but yeah, man, he he didn't come home. See, that's he did that? Well, this is a difference in how they, you know, being. You see how Tisha just transitioned that into all right. Enough about you. Let me tell you about me, and I don't know who. I'm going to jump back because I don't know who she said she wanted to visit with or who didn't come home. So let's let's listen to that again. I don't want to yeah. try today, but yeah. he, he didn't come home. See, that's he did that? Well, this is a difference in how they, you know, being raised by, you know, Harley being raised at my house compared to him not. He's got to always, you know, because of their lifestyle, they've always had to, you know, live that life of oh see now this is the real reason she wanted to talk to you amy so she could push that narrative but here she goes again with comparing the way she raised harley she raised harley right because she's just this outstanding parent she did it right harley you weren't raised that way i did x y and z she really holds herself to a very high standard. And she thinks that she is the bomb.com regarding parenting. Yet we spend every day listening to you manipulate and gaslight and abuse your child. You know, Harley being raised in my house compared to him not. He's got to always, you know, because of their lifestyle, they've always had to, you know, live that life of oh he's 15 well what do you mean he didn't come home you oh this is her other fake son oh i'm sorry i'm sorry you guys Letitia's referring to her imaginary 15 year old son hey Allie. she's talking about her imaginary boy you're my boy boo her imaginary 15 year old son he didn't come. All right. Now I need, I need to really go back. He didn't come home. Okay. So she wanted to set up the video visit, but she couldn't, but she really wanted to video visit him and he didn't come home. Who the fuck has this kid? Who has this 15 year old son that you speak of? Cause I kind of wanted to yeah. try today, but yeah, he, he didn't come home. See, that's he did that? Well, this is a difference in how they, you know, being raised. I, you know, Harley being raised at my house compared to him not. He's got to always, you know, because of their lifestyle, they've always had to, you know, live that life of, oh, he's 15. Well, what do you mean he didn't come home? You let Harley 15 not come home? I mean, it wasn't like he didn't come home because he didn't know where he's at. It's just he just didn't come home. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, yeah. man. She wouldn't have been able to. She would have had. She'd have been grounded. She'd have lost everything. Bitch, you're having imaginary scenarios with whoever is raising your child, your imaginary child, down to, yeah, we were talking, and I was like, what do you mean you didn't come home? If Harley ever not came home, that would be an issue. She'd be punished. And, and who are you going back and forth with? Who? Who has your, who has your son? You're going 
so desperate that you're creating these conversations that never took place. You know, it's, right? That's what my girl would do. It's just different, you know, being a dad and a grandma and stuff, and it's just like, oh, you know. So this imaginary son is with his dad. Do not tell me you fucked the head of El Chapo. Is that the narrative you're going with? Is that the narrative you're going with, Tisha? This imaginary 15-year-old son is living with his dad and grandma. And he just wasn't raised right because he didn't have Tisha in his life. There's no way in hell if he was raised by Tisha, his ass wouldn't be home at 15 when he's supposed to. Papa Chapa. <laughs> Papa Chapo. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that would be able forth. to... They would go back and forth okay. to Mexico, you know, like, all the time. And I'm just like, it, it would drive me crazy. <laughs> no! Oh, no, she really's going there. She's really going there. They let him tra <laughs> They let him travel back and forth to Mexico all the time. Is this an illegitimate son of a drug kingpin? Oh, Tisha. Stop dropping chapos. Stop. She really Oh, you're 14 you're <laughs> your 15-year-old son travels back and forth to mexico because you know he's part of that life man are you tisha <laughs> oh god it's so bad it's so bad man holy shit they let him go back and forth to mexico you know like all the time and i'm just like it it drives me crazy and i'm just like you don't worry no he's you know he's bilingual he's whatever i'm like i don't care <laughs> I'm concerned with him. My son, my son that I never had before, 15 years old, traveling back and forth to Mexico, and they try to reassure me, don't worry, he's bilingual. Ah! What the, f bilingual? No, you know, traveling to a different country, you know, the biggest threat is he may not be able to speak the language. Really? Fuck, part of El Chapo, but no. He's bilingual. It's okay. Are you, are you kidding me? Tisha, Amy, what are you doing, Amy? You're just going to let her keep going like this? Come on. Oh, he's, you know, he's bilingual. He's whatever. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I like, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm like a helicopter mom, yeah. but I get nervous. And I remember when I was a kid, you know, like I used to ride bikes out. You know, until the streetlights yeah. came on, there weren't cell phones back then, and like That's nothing was, really yeah. seemed dangerous. And now I'm like, my kids have to be in my eyesight, so I know I can yeah. imagine how you feel. If, you know, he's I out just don't going want him out and to have to like, be, you know, he saw all this and he saw the money and the wealth, and you know, and I just don't want him. I want him to know that he doesn't have to be. You know, he can still go to go to school, and get education like I did. You know what I'm saying? And, like, <laughs> Oh, my poor spawn, my, the blood of my blood, all he was raised was with money and, and drugs and that lifestyle. And I want him to know you could be like mama. You can be educated like mama. You can go to school. <laughs> you can get a fucking doctorate. You could be a fucking doctor, son. Okay. You don't have to get caught up in that lifestyle of your Papa, follow Mama's footsteps. Are you kidding me, Tisha? Once again, holding herself on a pedestal. Even, even in this situation, she's in one year anniversary of her getting arrested. Okay. But don't worry. You know, I, I don't want you to get caught up in all that rich and fame and don't follow Papa's footsteps. Be like your mama. Go to school, pay for your doctorate. You know? And get arrested. Yeah, that, that works. That works perfectly, Tisha. It doesn't have to be, you know, he can still go to, go to school and get education like I did. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. But 
you know, you don't want to never hear any of that. He just be like, oh, it's set up for him. Don't worry about it. everything. Shut up for him. <laughs> oh, it's set up for him. Is that is that is that the sound of Papa? Oh, don't worry. He's set up for him. He's set up for him. is that is that your imaginary baby daddy? Who who that? New phone. Who this? Who who? What the fuck are you doing? Okay, what the? F Seriously, what's happening here, Tisha? What's happening? When you speak to Amy next, are you going to talk to her about your imaginary son? You know, does any did anybody witness nine fucking full months of you with a pregnant baby? Or was that filled with cash money too? Please tell us. <laughs> Could he? Lucky him. I wish I was him. <laughs> yeah, so they're like, oh, it's set up already. Yeah, well, you know, you better, you know, hurry up and send me up some money. He will. He will. Right, he just, yeah. He, he's just waiting. Like, they just be waiting to make sure I'm be loyal, you know? That's all. So, now your Spawn's papa being part of El Chapo is going to send you cash money, but they be waiting, they be waiting, you know, you know, they be waiting to see if you're loyal because snitches get stitches, right? And you can roll over on them because they somehow are correlated into Gannon's murder. This is the opposite of Achman's Razor. If you guys are familiar with Achman's Razor, what's the opposite of Achman's Razor? Letitia fucking Stouk. Okay, she is anything but the most simple explanation, even when it comes to her lies, she goes so far and beyond even what she has to lie about. He be waiting. He be waiting. Do you think he would ever like come and visit you? Because I read, I was reading online a couple weeks ago that they are starting to allow visitation there at El Paso. Yeah, I won't. He wouldn't do it. It'd be too. You know, because he'd have to put his he'd have to put his ID in. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, and like, no, you know, I told my I told goose. my husband. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> yeah, like, Amy. First of all, shut up. She doesn't want to listen to anything you have to say. Don't you realize you're just supposed to be sitting there long enough for her to get this on the recorded line? Number one. Number two, you are way too giddy. You are way too excited and thrilled to be on this call with her. And that's concerning, okay? But you keep interrupting her and she doesn't care what you have regarding what you told your husband. She doesn't care. She's just trying to get this on a recorded line. No, that's, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got me. <laughs> Yeah, like, that might not be good a good idea for him. <laughs> yeah. No, I told my husband though, because um, like I love to travel, and Colorado's been on my bucket list for like two years. So oh, yeah. last year, he, my husband promised me that he would, you know, find a way to make sure I could like go travel, um, possibly without the kids, maybe with them. They usually go with me, but he's like, I want you to go have fun. So if I ever make my way out to Colorado, um, hopefully sooner or later, I could pop by and see you. <laughs> you can actually yeah, meet me in yeah. person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because your bucket list is to have a fucking in-person meeting with Letitia Stouk. Is that what I'm understanding? That you're going to leave your children and husband save enough money to not go and visit beautiful Colorado, but to visit Letitia Stouk in jail. That sounds wonderful. You, like you know when you're here hiking and all kinds of stuff like that but i mean yeah i'm a florida there's person. a place <laughs> so you know yeah I'm a girl. Oh, yeah. i like i like florida but i'm so burnt out we go there all the freaking time because you know Candace family's from there yeah and we actually just went i think it was two weekends ago but yeah, we, we left yeah we left on a friday night and then left saturday morning at like six like it was pointless he had, oh, to, wow. he had to go pick up his gun because he left it there forever ago. Yeah. So I'm just like, I want to go somewhere else. I keep telling him I want to go to Myrtle Beach. And he's <laughs> like, well, why don't we go to Myrtle Beach? Because we get to go to... Wait. 
So you want to go to both Colorado and Myrtle Beach? That's freaky, Amy. The, what are you doing? Retracing Letitia's steps of with Gannon's murder? Why would you want to go to all the places Letitia has been? That's not normal. Again, it's not the communication she had with Letitia that's unusual for me. It's what she says and how she acts. Yeah, she's in awe of her. He's telling him I want to go to Myrtle Beach. And he's <laughs> like, well, why don't we go to Myrtle Beach? Because we could just go to Florida and said, my family's there and blah, blah, blah. But you can go by and say hi to Harley. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, because she's in South Carolina, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow her on Instagram. She is so, she is so freaking pretty. I am jealous of her hair. Oh, thank you. Ty looks the same, but so the difference is Ty's got a little bit more. Of... <sighs> so, so the spawn's name is Ty. I thought she said Ty before, but I wasn't sure. So Harley is so beautiful. So beautiful. She is. She Harley's gorgeous, Okay. Yeah, Ty. Ty looks a bit like her, but Ty's hair... What? Ty's hair is what, Tisha? Tell us. Tell us how your imaginary son looks of the drug kingpin. Oh, Lord. Oh, thank you. Ty looks the same, but so the difference is Ty's got a little bit more of... um. Holly's got more of exotic, you know, like she could be like any race. You know, yeah. Ty's got a little bit, you could see a little bit of the Hispanic in him. Because, you know, I, I was have wondering. Have <laughs> of course, right? You got to keep nudging who he's the son of, right? Right, Tisha? I have dark hair what? anyway. But, um, yeah, I was wondering why he looked it. like. Because yeah. <laughs> after you yeah. told me, I was like trying to have a mental image. <laughs> Ready, Amy? You want to know what he looks like? Look straight ahead. Try to observe the air, and that would be an accurate depiction because he does not exist. He looks like nothing because he doesn't exist. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you probably wouldn't have a hard time finding any pictures of him on um, on uh, on Instagram. You just have to figure out his last name, which would be easy to figure out. But he's just got he, he's got it like. Instead of having his first name and his last name, he's got it like a, you know, they got these little like street names or something like that. He thinks he's a little bit of a gangster sometimes, so he's got that name there. Then he's got the last name, so you just have to find but, that. But I would tell you what it was, but you know, these people wouldn't notice. So. His first name's T Y, right? Huh? His first name he spells it T Y. Yeah, it's T Y. Yeah. I wonder is Harley friends with him, maybe? <laughs> I'm going to say don't comment on that because, you know. Hey, <laughs> deeper is delight. We can't see it, but we can sure as hell hear it, can't we? Duper is delight. Why do you think she chuckled in that moment? Have you ever mentioned to Harley she has a brother? A long lost brother? You chuckled because you weren't sure what to say when confronted with that question, right? And it, I'm believing that it made you a little bit uncomfortable for a moment, right? Because Amy could reach out to Harley at any point and Harley would be like, what the fuck? So you're going to say no comment to weasel your way out of that. I'm going to say don't comment on that because, you know, I'm not going to put Harley, like, in case they would ever oh. ask her to think. I ain't never going to have it where she would be like, oh, your mom did the note. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I definitely, I yeah, 100% no. understand that. I was, I'll see if I can, I'll look and see if I can find him. I'm not real Instagram savvy. I kind of just go on there and post pictures. I'm more of like a Facebook user. Yeah. But, yeah, I follow Harley on there and occasionally my phone will be like, you know, Instagram notification. And yeah, she'll be posting mine's there. there. Mine's on there and then. Oh, mine, you probably could find. Well, I don't know, but yeah, you wouldn't be able to see some pictures because it ain't public. Yeah, I see. I think mine, I don't know if mine's public or not. I don't think it is. I have to look. No, Harley did a live on Instagram one time. I don't know what it was before. It was before the holidays. 
and she had her eyelashes done. And I like yeah. got on the live, and I was, I asked her how she did it, and I guess she gets threaded on or something. <laughs> Yeah, she does, like, oh. the $90 ones. I told her she's crazy. But they laugh yeah, and they a... look good on her. So. Who? Who? Harley paying $90 for some eyelashes right now? She better not. She better not. We listen to day after day after day after day of you hassling her on every dollar. And as far as we know, she's broke as a joke. So are you referring to the past? The past would make sense. I believe that because you were spending Al's money, right? And you didn't give a shit when it came to that. That's what she told me. Cause I was like, why do you, like, how do your eyelashes look so nice? Cause I just put on mascara and they're not, they don't get as long as I want them. And she like read my comment and told me she gets them threaded on, but they last a really long time. So I'm like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try that someday. If I feel like spending that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. She, she gets them done like that. And they, but see, her theory is she doesn't use mascara. And she's like, mom, by the time I spend. You have one minute remaining. $25 on one thing of mascara. She was like, and then if you apply it so much, she's like, and I'm using it, you know, a week. She said, I might as well just get my eyelashes. I mean, you know, just get them done. I'm like, yeah, I guess it makes sense. Oh, no. Sorry. Ain't nobody going through one brand new thing of mascara per week. Ain't happening. I don't know where you're getting your damn mascara, but every day application, even twice a day application of mascara, would last much longer than a damn week. Yeah, that's girl math. Girl math. That is not uh-uh. Uh-uh. Makes sense. It does, because I'm not scared of expensive. I just bought some today when I went out, and it was like yeah. $15 for a bottle. <laughs> yeah, she's like, can I use it over and over applying it, trying to keep them on like that? She's like, so I might as well. So I was like, yeah, it's okay. But like, you're working hard for it, so go ahead. But, you know. Yeah, she deserves it. She works <laughs> hard. Is that what you say to Harley when she dares to spend money? Go ahead, girl. You're working hard for that. No. Is that really how you react, Letitia? No. Yes. No, no, sir. I mean, Jan, John, no. No. Let's, let's be real, Letitia. No. You're like, yo, don't spend my $30. I want a Mickey and Minnie Mouse sketch. So don't you, <laughs> don't you dare spend it. Anytime she dares spend money, you get on her ass. Where did it go? I thought you got money for the bills. I thought that, so no, you like to portray yourself. <laughs> you like to portray yourself to be something you are not. And I'm laughing because of the photo I was sent. Of Letitia's son. <laughs> you guys kill me. I have to I have to show you guys both. All right. So we got just in exclusive photos of Letitia Stouk's son, Ty. Let me pull it up. So first up, <laughs> we have the invisible man. Do 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 do. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much. <laughs> Do you have any baby photos of Ty? Sure do. <laughs> sure fucking do. Hold on. Let me just eat my lunch real quick. I'll get back to you. Uh, I see he looks like her father. Oh, my God. That's funny. You guys are funny. <laughs> okay. Going back to this. And this call's about to end. Hold on. I know, I know Ty even told her, he's like, if you weren't, if I didn't, if I didn't know she wasn't my sister, I was like, shut up. <laughs> what? what? Oh, see, this is what makes Letitia even more sick. Yeah, Ty even said to me, 
my son, Harley's brother, hmm, if she wasn't my sister, you know. So that literally never, so not only does she not have a son, but that never happened. So why would you add that? Why would you do that? Just to sexualize your own child? That's how inappropriate she is. Not only lying about having a son, but lying that he wanted a hit on Harley. That's sick. You are sick. You are. You got it. Yeah, she deserves it. She works hard. I know. I know. Ty even told her. He's like, if you weren't. If I didn't, if I didn't know she wasn't my sister, I was like, shut up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, all right. This is good. I hang up. I'll talk to you again. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Take care. Have a good night. Tell Link. Bitch, she hung up already, Amy. Stop with your fangirling. So there's one more call. She hangs up. And then she speaks to Amy Bolton. Okay. Same day, March 2nd. One year anniversary of her arrest. Would you know it yet? Nope. But let's see. Is she going to talk to Amy Bolton about her son? Guess we'll find out. Thank you for using. Hey, baby. Hey. hey. How'd your birthday go? What? How'd your birthday go? It was good. I just hung out with the pups, you know? Well, you didn't party all night we... long. No. You, I'm not doing that anymore. I know. That's when you get over I, right? I did it at the barrel. <laughs> we went to the barrel. You know, everybody, every, all my friends brought their dogs. Yeah. So the dogs played, and then it was... Uh, the barrel serves beer and wine, and then they have a food truck. So that's what I did. Nice, nice. I'm not nice. gonna get crazy. I didn't find any Harley sexy men while you were out. Oh my god, no! I'm outside right now, and it's so cold. I'm going inside. It's cold. I thought it was warm there. No, it's cold. Oh, well, Harley said it was like but, um, 79 for like two days. It was, but then today it dropped. I guess there's a cold front coming through. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Harley called me today, or Harley texted me today. She was kind of sad. She's like, Amy, it's been one year that I've been alone. And I'm like, I know. I'm like, are you doing okay? I didn't even think about it, that it's been one year. And she's like, I'm okay. She's like, it's just us. And I'm like, I know. Um, I'm like, just, it'll all work out in the end. We, we got to do what we got to do. I just felt yeah. bad for her. She said, Yeah. Do you feel bad for her? Leticia, do you feel bad? Do you feel bad? You refuse to acknowledge the one year anniversary of Gannon's murder and now the one year anniversary of you being arrested. Do you feel bad? Because you won't speak to Harley at all about what's going on. So she has to speak to everybody else. Uh, and I'm like, I know. Um, Mike, just. It'll all work out in the end. We, we got to do what we got to do. We just felt yeah. bad for her. She said, and then she's like, but I got 100 on my math test. And I was like, <laughs> that a girl. That's good. I was like, you better get 100 on your math test or I will hurt you. I know. We'll just keep trying. How's to everything break. going there? Uh, you know, today. I Are they going to let you do all your shit now? Like, you got to have access to everything. Yeah, well, I haven't heard anything yet. I think they're still working on it and uh, trying to get, like, the way to figure it out. Somebody came by today and was, like, scheduled a professional visit with me, which was kind of weird. And then when I go, they were like, oh, they had to reschedule. I was like, huh? I was like, what was the professional visit for? I don't know. I don't I don't know who it was or anything. That's why I was so confused. I was like, hey, um, are you sure? Or like, yeah. So, I was not sure. Weird. Yeah, then I got ready to go down there, but then they were like, oh, they had to reschedule. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was so confused about that. But I was like, are you sure? They're like, yeah, they called earlier. Sorry. Well, I'm wondering, like, so because you're representing yourself, are they going to let you into the library to, like, they need to let you into the library. They need, they need to let you contact people you need to contact. Like, are they going to let, are they going to follow the rules or are they going to be dickheads? Well, they do follow the rules, Amy. Letitia relays to you nonsense, though. The only person preventing Letitia from going to the law library is Letitia herself. 
because the Mexican mafia keeps trying to recruit her or she doesn't like the time slot. Well, if you don't like, if you don't follow the rules when you represent yourself, then you can bring that to the judge and just say that they that they prevent you from doing that. You know what I mean? So okay, that's so yeah. what I was wondering because I was like, right now you can't do anything. So I was like, how's she gonna go to? I mean, I know you're smart enough to mm. learn the law, yeah, but yeah. what if they don't let you have the books, or what if they don't? Let yeah. Keep hyping that ego up. Keep inflating that ego. She's smart enough to learn the law. Going up against murder charges. Letitia fucking Stout. Amy, come on. Well, you do it. And yeah. And then the advisory council is supposed to be able to bring you the computer and sit with mm -hmm. you and let you. Okay. And they are supposed to be there to answer any questions you have. Um, no, I they, are, they can help you file any motions. They can help you, like, you know, okay. answer, So do you answer. have one of them? Yeah, I just don't know who it is yet. Um, but that's what I'm waiting on. But, yeah. Okay, so they will give all that to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Do you have anyone you think you want to bring on as an attorney? <laughs> I can't Are you just going for it? No, You're just going for it, man. I can't say nothing on here. All right. Yeah. What what can't you say on the recorded line? Now, I know that there are things that you definitely can say, but if you're going to bring them on for an attorney, people are going to find out. Everyone's going to find out. So what's the issue? Oh, because you don't have a plan. Oh, okay. That's, that's more likely. I was wondering, because <laughs> Harley's worried. She's like, I don't know what my mom's thinking. And I'm like, I feel like if it's your mom, she has a plan. Like, she may have a plan, but that doesn't make it a good plan. She planned to escape through the window with a broomstick. That was indeed a plan. Now, was that a good plan? No. No, it fucking wasn't. But this is heartbreaking because Harley could not even talk to her mom about this. Every time she speaks to her mom, the weather, the dogs, the did you did you spend my money? It's just heartbreaking because I couldn't imagine how confused she must have been. They're planting a chip in my arm. I'm trying to cut it out. Like, it, it must have been such a hard thing to come to terms with that, well, why is she doing this? Why is she acting this way? And the only explanation is, is that she's lying. And then to just pretend everything's okay every time you pick up that phone and can you, can you find these song lyrics for me? Just as if nothing is going on, yet... Harley lived in the outside world. It was everywhere. Everywhere. And she couldn't even talk to her own mom about it. I was thinking, and I'm like, I feel like if it's your mom, she has a plan. Like, yeah. it's your mom. And well, she's I like, I know. She's like, plans. but I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't want her to worry I know. about it because that's not for her to worry about. I know, but she is like worried about you. You're her mom. She's worried about you. I know, but and she's got to so put her... As soon as it all happened, she's like, what do I do? And I know. Well, then, so then the other, yes, the other day she did like, you know, I don't, did I tell you that about how I bought a necklace yeah, in Landon? Put, okay. Yeah. She loved it. She's got it. She loves it. And she had posted like something like that on Facebook and all these people started tearing her apart. So sure did. Now, I don't think she should have posted it on Facebook. I don't. You have to gauge the temperature, and the temperature was fucking scorching. Because a lot of people thought she was involved to an extent. Because of what her mom did. We can see now what happened. But that was all because of you, Letitia. And this is what I mean. As you... Talk about stupid things, not saying the dogs are stupid, but just very irrelevant things, minimal things. 
Harley was dealing with a world of hate. That's the truth. She was dealing with a world of hate. I don't think Harley should have posted it. I think she, it was, it should have been more personal thing. Oh, Landon is so much better than her. And that's what we were speaking about yesterday. The fact that Landon had the strength to share that with Harley could not have been easy, could not have been easy. And I could imagine feeling very territorial over his remains and even wanting to protect them after what he went through and to be able to share a little bit of him with the child of the person who murdered him. That's strength. That's some strength right there. She posted, Landon put some of Gannon's ashes in a necklace and gave it to Harley. Harley took a photo and she posted it to social media. People were not happy. Um, and I remember when this happened too. But that's because all the answers were not out yet. And at this point, all we know is that Harley bought the cleaning supplies. Harley traveled across country with her mom, with Gannon's decomposing body. It wasn't, uh, Harley would post in these Facebook groups, defending Letitia, slandering Alan Landon. But now we know that was Letitia posting from Harley's account. But people were not happy and it was, I, I think she should have been smarter about that, but I think it should have been more of a personal moment, not let me post this on social media because it wasn't about social media attention. But I can rationalize that to young and stupid, you know, young and stupid, but the fact that Letitia refuses to acknowledge, yeah, exactly, Kathy, young and stupid. You're not thinking things thoroughly through, you know. Um, but the fact that Letitia refuses to acknowledge, and that's what I get angry at Aunt Brenda about. They refuse to acknowledge what Harley's going through and the situation she's in. It's really messed up. Yeah, now, like, I think it should have been more of a, the fact that Landon even did this and to take it very personal and, and not everything is meant to be posted on social media. And I think it would have been smarter to gauge the temperature. And like I said, the temperature was hot out there. Um, but she's a newly 18, you know, and I don't put it all, all on her. I, it's on Letitia. It's on Letitia. So, you know, Peyton Marie had to show up. Yep. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Remember the Peyton Marie account. It's letting us know Amy is Peyton Marie and or took over the Peyton Marie account. Do you guys remember what the Peyton Marie account was? I went through all of those social media Facebook posts with you. Peyton Marie was the one in the Facebook groups posting inside information. You guys don't remember? Yeah, Peyton, Kathy. Peyton Marie, when I went through all those Facebook posts with you guys, Peyton Marie was the account that was posting all of this exclusive inside information saying that she was investigating for Letitia and stuff. And they knew specifics about the pretext calls, uh, Al cutting off his finger and blood and that, everything. So Amy is saying she had to pull out Peyton Marie to go on Harley's defense. So it's this burner account that was around prior to Letitia getting arrested and going all up in the Facebook groups, defending her, and pointing the finger at Alan Landon. So, you know, Peyton Marie had to show up. 
Yep. <laughs> and talk some bullshit. I was like, y'all better fucking leave. Like, I'm just, I lost it, man. Well, did they realize they came, need- where he came from, too? No, they, no, she didn't even say, hey, I got this from Landon. Like, she just posted, like, kind of a testimony to Gannon. Yeah. I mean, about, like, how, you know, she liked having him as a brother and stuff like that. It was nothing. And about how, you know, God has his ways and this and that. And, yeah. And she did. She was called a biblical testimony. Yeah. So she did all that. And, but then all these people in these groups started, like, saying, oh, she looks high and stuff. So, you know, I lost my shit on those people. High. Yeah, they're trying to say she looks high in. Yeah, they're like she looks high. That girl like, has the worst they, just, they started. America. Even my roommate was like, "Dude, she's not high." They're like, they're like, she was like, they're all just pissed. She's so beautiful, and they're not. And I'm like, that's what I'm thinking. But and and she didn't say anything bad in it. She was completely like humble. Like I don't understand why these people. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, Amy. And it's not fair in the long run, but people were mad when Har- Harley posted those biblical testimonies. And I remember, because I was mad. I was mad, I'll be honest. Because you are completely ignoring what the fuck is happening. But now that we get the full context, it makes sense, right? Of course she's ignoring it, because Letitia's ignoring it. She's having no communication whatsoever. She's not in the loop any more than anyone else was in the loop. And so when she started posting these biblical testimonies and regarding Gannon and God and this and good and good and good, it felt like a slap. Because you would never know that she was even being impacted by the loss of Gannon. Hey, Alina. It was frustrating. Um... Again, now that we can look hindsight, it makes sense. It makes sense. But at the time, one year anniversary of of Letitia's arrest, people were angry. And people doubted that Harley didn't have a level of involvement. That's why. I hope Harley eventually comes out and does an interview. But what I hope first is for her to heal. What I hope is for her to heal and get away and deal with all of that trauma. And then after that, if she feels like she wants to come out and share her story, I really hope she does. Completely like humble. Like I don't understand why these people. So I just lost it. I was like, I'm losing it. And like your family members were like loving it. Um, they're like, I had like Katrina and Jill liking my comments. Like, I was ready to fight these people. <laughs> and Harley even told me her song. She's like, I appreciate you sticking up for me. She's like, but it's okay. And I'm like, no, but I don't know why they're saying stuff about you. Like, you didn't do anything. Yeah. You're talking about how you miss your brother. And then they're all over here talking you about you. They think you're hot. Which you practically raised when other people were doing other yeah. stuff. <laughs> right there. You couldn't eat. You couldn't just not get the digs in, could you? You can't even acknowledge what Amy is saying to you about what your child is going through. You refuse to acknowledge it. But you sure as hell can get your digs in. About how you and Harley raised him. Well, you know what? You murdered him. I don't give a shit if every day leading up to his murder, you were the best mom that could have ever existed. You you not only murdered him, you tortured him. And you desecrated his corpse. You What you, what you did is unfathomable. Thank you, peace, love, and pops. Absolutely, 100% love the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, There are no words, but why don't you, instead of taking digs, why don't you listen to what Amy is telling you and have concern for what you're doing, what your actions, your behavior is doing to your child? 
And so when you pick up and you'd be like, well, what's wrong on these calls? Maybe it could get through your head what she's going through. Just a little smidge. Because not everybody is like you, Tisha. Not everybody can completely shield off all these emotions and the embarrassment. You can. Harley isn't, isn't invincible. She's freshly 18 and everything is different. And she has the social media can be heavy. It can be heavy. She has a world of hate on her so shoulders. So why don't you stop talking to her about the weather and the dogs and start talking to her about something real? Hey, Coco. Yeah, yeah. You know, they know that. that. Like, either. there's been people in groups be like, "We know you spent more time with him than his own dad." Like, they yeah. say that. And Landon has said that to me. Landon's like, "I think Harley's raised my kids more than anybody." She's like, "Cause well, Lena, I guess, tells her how much she loves Harley, and then Al won't let Lena talk to Harley, and then anytime Lena talks to Landon." If she brings up anything about Gannon, he takes the phone from her and won't let her talk. Well, that's not So him. he's like, he's prevent. well, yeah, he's not letting Lena talk to her mom. And then he monitors her calls. So if Lena wanted to say anything about what happened or anything, as soon as she would bring up anything about it, he takes the phone from her. Which is heartbreaking. I, I can't judge Landon and I can't judge Al in this it's an impossible scenario because I could sit here all day and be like, mm, you know, I don't like that he did that or I don't like that this happened. But <coughs> sorry, the truth is they were both in a really horrific situation. And now the fear of their remaining child who's who's alive to protect her. But they're both now in a huge custodial fight over this. It, it had to have gotten nasty, but I can't judge. It's just sad. It, what it is, is it's sad. It's sad that her actions really extended well, be, well beyond Gannon's actual murder because her destruction continued even when she was in jail. And I was like, well, is there anything, like, that the attorneys can do? Like, I don't think that's right. I remember she wanted you to, like, write. She wanted yeah. you to, like, talk. And she was like, tell Tisha if she can't talk, at maybe write me a letter. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know if Tisha's going to write you a letter. Yeah. I'm like, I could tell her to write you a letter, but, like, that's weird. Yeah. I I'm just like, well, I it'll no work out. for her, you know, because... You know, like I said, the whole plan was. I know. Right? She and was she supposed, said she was for you. Know. You still have love for Landon? I'm sorry. When did that happen? When you were telling the world she was involved in Gannon's disappearance? We went through every post. You slandered the hell out of her. During the worst imaginable time of her life. And you straight up said... She has involvement. So you still have love for her? If that's love, I want no part of it. You know, like I said, the whole plan was. I know. Right? She and was she supposed, said she was for you. Know. You know, she was supposed to know two days, three, four days down the line. It was just the process of getting ready, you know. I weren't going to just pull up with a U-Haul and just be leaving out. Being like, hey, we're out. You know, not, you know, not being strategic. Yeah. No, no, I mean, Landon has said. So just a few days after Gannon's murder, it was supposed to be Wednesday. Letitia was supposed to be delivering Gannon and Lena to Landon. That's what the plan was. Now, I believe, I don't know if Landon and, and Letitia ever spoke regarding that stuff. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me. See, like half of me tugs in the direction of Letitia didn't want the kids. So I'm sure she would gladly give them back. But then I'm pulled in the opposite direction with, oh, no, she would she would never let Landon have that satisfaction because she loved having the control 
over Landon. So I really struggle there. You know, not being strategic. Yeah. No, no, I mean, Landon has said to me, she's like, I don't think Tisha did it. She's like, and if Tisha has anything to do with it, there's no way she did it on her own. She's like, there's no, she's like, if you look at the time frame these people are saying there, she's like, there's no way. Yeah. And then she just said, she's like, I know Tisha, and there's no way. And I'm like, good. Now, do you guys really think Lannon said that? Honestly, I don't, I guess it would circle back around of, do you think Amy was intentionally saying this um, to get information to help Lannon? Do you think Landon was genuinely saying this? to fool Amy and try to get information or do you think she genuinely was saying this but all all I could rationalize is this was a heartbroken mom who didn't know what to believe it was very confusing it was all over the place now she's in a horrific custodial battle for her surviving child with Al, I'm sure there was a lot of resentment and a lot of anger. And I don't think she knew what to believe. And that's what I mean by like Letitia. Oh, what she did and what she continued to do to these parents. It's damage that could never be reversed. And so I'm so proud of Al and Landon. To be able to stand united for Gannon at, at trial. Because knowing how far this went and how deep this went, I could not imagine. But they came together hand in hand for Gannon. And I'll never forget Landon at trial. I'll never forget she explained, how did you get through this? How were you able to sit here every day in trial with the horror going on in front of you? Letitia flipping the bird, just everything, all these details. And she said, Gannon is here with me. Gannon is the reason I got through here. She's like, if it wasn't for Gannon, I couldn't. But Gannon's presence is here with me in this courtroom. And he is what gave me the strength. And it just, oh, just like the, the, the strength of a true mom. Honestly, like there's no other words. Thank you, Elena. That's very kind of you. Elena gifted a membership. Congratulations to whoever received the membership. Please thank Elena if you got it um, for Gannon. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you guys cry, but like I just closed my eyes and I just, they, there was so much destruction and heartbreak and this woman didn't know what happened to her son. And imagine being on the outside, right? She didn't live with Alan and Letitia. So she truly didn't know what was taking place. But to cause that conflict between them and that destruction, my heart breaks. And for her to still share part of Gannon's remains with Harley, that is a, a strength I could not even describe. Honestly, because again, I would feel territorial over his remains, knowing what happened to him, knowing what happened to his body. I would, I wouldn't want anybody to have any part of his ashes. That's just the truth. I can't imagine I would, but to not only share him, but to share him with Harley, it's amazing. And she just said, she's like, I know Tisha, and there's no way. And I'm like, good. I'm glad that you understand that. Yeah, but she really. can't say anything, like, to the groups, because if she if she would say anything in a group to the people talking about Harley, Al's going to use that in the custody case. I was gonna She's still Al trying yet. to compete with Al for custody. Oh, because they haven't finished that yet? No. 
he keeps winning all the time and she is not dealing with like she keeps like refiling like she's not dealing with it and i don't oh that's again it's so heartbreaking because uh, imagine that uh, not having lena then and and the what she caused between Landon and Al and those dynamics and what you then ripple effect and caused Lena. Lena had to experience her parents not only losing her brother, but now her parents battling to the death for over her in these custodial bat battles. Uh, it's so heartbreaking. She had so many victims, so many victims. I think Lena's in a good situation. Right. I guess Al's playing house with like this whole new family. So the girl that he was with, Heather, that's not his girlfriend. It's like some new person and he's playing house with them. And what they like already has do. that. Yep. Already has her taking care of the kids and then he does his own thing. Yeah. And <laughs> it, like, that's what she said. And I was like, why don't you guys just get like Heather to testify? Yeah. Like, pull her in. But I don't think she wants anything to do with it. So. Yeah, probably not. And plus, too, it wouldn't be enough of a um, time frame, you know. Trust me, it would. If I could, yeah. you know, something I could. But, see, I have to be careful because, like, I can't. I, can't I know. Like, she for, knows. She gets you know, it. Messing with witnesses or, you know, or nothing like that. Like, I'm not going to do that, you know, because. And she she understands. She's like, if there's case, anything you know? Tisha can write me, just tell her to, just tell her to. She said, if there's anything she can write me, just tell her to write. Yeah. Nothing to do with your case. She's like, if there's yeah. anything you can do to help her win custody of Lena, but not jeopardize your case, send yeah. her a letter. And yeah. she told me to give you her address. I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. I would have. But I'm like, I feel like it's all connected. To say I was like, you know, I was trying to bother somebody or something. And I, you know, I ain't going to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Not until I'm not I just told her to hang in there that she'll get Lena eventually, but she was like, what if it's too late? And I'm like, don't say that. Well, you know, that's the thing is he's going to always be with someone who's going to do all the work. You know what I mean? Where he does his thing. And he is right now. If he is the breadwinner and you aren't working, that's not doing all the work. Marriage is a team effort, and if he's responsi responsible for all the bills, guess what you would be responsible for, Letitia? The home and the children. But the fact that you take look at that as a hassle, it's, it's the most rewarding job you could ever fucking have. You know. That's what he's always going to do. So you did everything. You and Har like Harley raised the kids. If, it was, if I was at work, Harley was there. If, I, if Harley was gone, I was there. <sighs> or we were both there doing it. Cooking and Everybody knows that, that, though. So it's like, well, why does he think he's dad of the year? Because he's not. Yeah. Well, and he's got these people snowed. You know, like, he, he's he got it pulled over their head. Like, he's split up. Oh, did you know he has a GoFundMe page? For what? Support Al. <laughs> no, I, you know, Pay Murray was like, what do you need? This? <laughs> oh, great. So you're admitting Peyton Marie. She used the burner account to even comment under Al's GoFundMe. You went and commented and continued to talk smack to a father who is grieving because his son was murdered. Shame on you, Amy. I have all those uh, all of those Peyton Marie posts. Shame on you. Yeah, it's a support Al GoFundMe page. And then they did a fundraiser the other day for money for Al at the Restoration Church. 
I'm like, bitch, you're using the church to get money. That's low. For what? What does he need it for now? What about Letitia? Wasn't it you, Peyton Marie, who was dropping Letitia and Harley's cash app, PayPal, Venmo, when Gannon wasn't even found yet? Because poor Tisha and Harley, right? Poor Harley, yes. She never should have been in that situation. But you were the one dropping their PayPal links under your Peyton Marie account in these Facebook groups, right? It was Letitia who created a 100,000 GoFundMe in Gannon's name. No. I don't know. Apparently he needs money. So, yeah, he's taking people's money left and right. God knows. It's ridiculous. It's bullshit. I mean, I don't understand what for because it's like, what what do you possibly need? I yeah, mean, it's not like Landon who needs to travel somewhere. Landon has to travel, so I get it. But yeah. he lives there. He doesn't have to travel anywhere. And he's not. He's got plenty of days from work. He's, I mean, he makes over $100,000 yeah. a year. His whole life was uprooted. He lost everything because it was taken away during the investigation. Yes. Yep. Me too, Maui. Yep. I'm just dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. I mean, he freaking doesn't have to pay daycare because he always has someone who took care of the kids. So, like... What, what could be possible yeah. need and now the new girl takes care of the kids so yeah. I don't even know who the new girl is It's not Heather was like I'm done with this shit she's like I'm out so he all of a sudden quickly already lives with this new person like how did you go from a girlfriend to this person in like a matter of a week like who moved in with someone that quick like what's wrong with you and that's because he wanted someone to take care of someone I know I know I, well, I know that, but Heather, people I'm online don't Heather realize that. Well, I'm glad the girl Heather got to Heather see was her. like, I am out. Yep. Because you... Yeah. Because I'm not going to have to wait and just... get to it and be, you know, whatever. I don't even know her, but I'm glad she... I mean, I know her, but I don't know her like that. But I'm glad she didn't have to go through that. So that's a good prayer for her. Yeah. I just think, like, I'm glad she got... I think she started to realize, like, listen, this guy isn't what I think, and I think she dipped out real quick. Yep. Or it was never serious, and yeah, let's be real, the guy was going through a heck of a lot, plus a custodial battle on top of it, and if it wasn't that serious... Like, people break up all the time. We're at the one year anniversary of you being arrested and charged with the murder of Gannon, but please continue to talk shit about these grieving parents. Good. Good for her. And that was smart. Yep. So, well, can't hate on her. And then whoever this is, I mean, they obviously are going to exactly. look at the money and it benefits them and then they're going to be tired of doing all the work. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Trust me. They ain't none, well, neither one of them can get any kind of period of the year. Neither one of them could do it. Be oh, but you can, Miss. I have a 15 year old son who his who looks like Harley, but was hitting on Harley. You know, the spawn of El Chapo, who bounces back and forth between Mexico, but he's bilingual, so it's I. Right. Are are we giving the parent of the year trophy to you, Miss Letitia Stouk? Guess what? Al could have been. A less than ideal parent. That could be true. Does not take away, even in the slightest, from what you've done. Al could be absent. Al, yeah, absolutely. You could have taken on that primary, uh, the primary role. I can believe that. But it does not matter. When it comes to what you did to him, if you were unhappy, you should have left, but you took everything out on that precious baby boy for whatever reason, 
all of your anger, all of your resentment, you directed towards Ganon. So much hate that you can't even pretend to care when it's your life depending on it. You can't even pretend to be a stepmother who's grieving the loss of her stepson. You're innocent, right? That's what you're trying to put forward. You're innocent. Where's the emotion? That's how much disdain you had for that baby. Because I was their lifeline. And, and they, nobody in their right Yeah, and if it wasn't them. you, it was Harley. You were not their lifeline. It is not unusual for the woman to take on the role of caregiver. I know we live in a different society these days and a lot of women do work also and, and don't stay at home. But that, for me at least, that is like, what do you want? A medal? What do you want? You took on the mother role for your children. It's the fact that they weren't your blood children is the problem, right? You didn't look at them as your bonus children. You looked at them as Al's kids. And I have to do this. You know, you're not doing work. You're the wife. You're the mom. You are supposed to take care of them if you aren't working. What did you want him to do? Work all goddamn day? And take care of, like, how did that ration in your head? You do not deserve a medal. You were not a lifeline. You did what you should have done. Well, no, actually, let me take that back. You didn't do what you should have done. But for all the times, like the things I hear her saying, I was the one who wrapped presents. I was the We all are. Welcome to motherhood. You clearly just despise it. But most of us are happy to do that. A lot of us enjoy doing that. There are amazing dads out there, but I'll be the first to say there's a big difference between a man and a woman. That's what makes us amazing, right? Is we aren't identical. We bring different things to the table. That motherly love. Nobody takes care of you like a mom. That's the amazing thing about being a woman, right? Take pride in that. You hated it. You marked every single thing down to throw back into the face because you're the lifeline. You weren't a lifeline. Guess what? He could have paid for a babysitter to do and at least they would have had their meals cooked and fucking laundry done. But you were making eight-year-old Lena do her own laundry. What did Lena have to eat? On the day her brother was murdered, beef jerky, popcorn, and cereal. All things she could have got herself. Shame on you. Blonde. And, and they, nobody in their right Yeah, and if it wasn't you, it was Harley. Yeah, they know who done what, who was at the school, who the teacher said always was, who emailed, who made sure the kids had this, who dressed the kids in nice clothes, how they go to school in clean clothes, how they always had their lunch every single thing how anything they ever had to sign up for was done through me yada 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 me 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 me, me. why is that crazy i'm sorry to the moms in the chat it are is that not a list of what we all do what is what is wrong here what aren't you understanding you did not work a Monday to Friday full-time job. What did you want? To sit on your fucking greasy ass watching Bachelor all day and let the kids fend for themselves? And I'm sorry, not trying to get nasty, but like, for real, what did you... You knew Al had two other kids when you got into this marriage. You fought for those kids. What did you expect? This wasn't a surprise. So, no, they don't. They need to stop with this. Whole... Everybody, I think everybody. You have one minute remaining. 
children. They think they're we got one minute remaining. You know, think he just is. He think he thinks he's a saint or something, and he's trying to he's put these blind photos on these people so bad that I just cannot wait. <laughs> I don't think Al is a saint by any means. Again, I've expressed my frustrations with Al, things that I do not agree with, but at the end of the day, none of it really is a factor in what you did. Again, Al doesn't need to be a superb dad. It has nothing to do with what you've done, but that is what you do in your mind. What you did to Gannon is justified for all the reasons you're listing. Because he is, he's fooling no. the DA, and I hate it that he's fooling the DA like that. Because the DA is probably really a good person, but he's fooling him so bad. Like, yeah. You know? I just don't know why the DA even likes him, to be honest. Because he's got on that front. He's like got that him. game going, and he's got more game than freaking Super Nintendo had. Just because he's in the military? Like, he yep. can Yeah. Yeah. But it's going to hang up, girl. Well, I love you, girl. Tell mom. All right. Hello. I love you. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. I will. Yep. Yeah. Right. So no mention that it's the one year anniversary of her arrest. Again, the, both those calls were March 2nd, 2021, one year anniversary of her arrest. Um, also very clear difference between the conversation with Amy Lang and the conversation, conversation with Amy Bolton, Amy Lang got her 15 year old son who doesn't exist. Okay. Her 15 year old son, um, and describing what he looks like and, oh, well, she would tell you what his name is and da, 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 da. But, you know, the danger, the danger. And then with Amy Bolton, let's just continue to talk shit about these parents whose child I murdered. And Amy, that's going to be something you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. Even if you understand now what Letitia has done. You're going to have to live with the fact that you did actively talk shit about these parents who had zero involvement in their child's murder for the rest of your life. And that's on you. But where we're picking up tomorrow, guys, it's going to be, I think, March 4th. And I know the first two calls are with the YouTuber. Um, <clears throat> and so whenever she talks to the YouTuber, she's pushing the Taylor, Janelle, vampire scenario. So, um, I guess we'll see where it goes. I'm not sure what the call is after that. I have to jump forward and look, but I know deets on the street is live for anybody who wants to go over. I'll drop her link, but thank you all so much for being here with me. You guys are amazing. That was a lot. That was emotional. Like I get very frustrated hearing this type of stuff. Um, like I said, I, I wish her brain could be studied. I would really like some clarification of what's going on up there because I can't figure it out for the life of me. But you guys are all amazing. I will see you tomorrow around 7 Eastern, 7, 730 Eastern. So I hope you all have a wonderful night and I will talk to you all soon.